This is a, our first real continuing education that's outside of traditional yeah. level three or four course. So this is something that uh, we've done some research on. And uh, we're happy to present. Um, between Jeff and I, I hope we can answer most of the questions. But what I can tell you is, it's one of my favorite things about teaching, is the more you understand it, that you're able to share it with other people, the better it serves yourself, the more you know, and the more you learn. And uh, I can tell you, I've, ne I've played golf now. This is going to be my 31st season. I started when I was 14, and now I'm going to be 40. I just turned 45 last week. And I've never hit the golf ball like I hit the golf ball this weekend. I've never hit it anything remotely close. And it's all because of the pressure mat, the studying the ground forces, and uh, some athletic concepts coming through that I've probably purposely tried to minimize some athleticism and and be a swinger instead of being a hitter and um, all this has changed so anyways without further ado we're going to uh, try and skip to the next we uh, quite often in history as instructors in the CGTF would talk about weight shift or weight transfer and now we're, we're not necessarily going to use that term as, as much going forward. And it's more of a change of pressure. And without kind of getting too far off, if you can take a look at me, I hope you can see me as well. But a weight transfer would indicate that the center of, of mass is actually moving instead of just the pressure when we turn. And that's, that's something that, you know, we see in golfers, we see a lot of sways, right? You see that quite often. The, the golfer is moving back and forth and a lot of lateral pressure doesn't have to be like that. So we're going to, we're going to look at it. So the easiest way for me to explain to a student is to look at a pitcher or to demonstrate throwing a ball. And what I like to see is this isn't the best graphic of a picture, but what it really shows, if you look at the first picture in the sequence, the momentum is already going towards home plate. And you can see that the ball, it, its momentum was actually going down to the ground. The hands and the, the, uh, the, the ball are last to come forward. And that's what we're talking about in golf. We're trying to get uh, momentum of the body going towards the target, and then the release comes afterwards. So in golf, we have a center of mass, which is found between the belly button and the spine. Okay, and that's, that's basically our center of gravity or center of mass. The center of pressure is the average of all forces into the ground. So it's a little different. We're, we're going to find that the center of mass stays relatively in the same spot where the center of pressure is uh, moving from, you know, back to front so, or, or neutral to back to front. And, and that's based on where the weight, uh, sorry, weight, and I use that so easily, and it's the wrong term, uh, using the pressure on the feet and the different areas in the feet. And we use the ground to, to push off and to create some speed. So how are we doing so far, Jeff? Good, yep, yep. Okay. Jump in whenever you want. Okay. So the uh, center of mass, center of pressure. Use it, using my pressure when I jump in? <laughs> What's that? Do I use the pressure from my feet to jump in? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so uh, the center of pressure and the relationship to the club head speed, this is, this is kind of the, um, the continuing education part. How do we create, how do we use this to make our golfers better? Well, First thing is just like ball flight laws where we say you need solid contact uh, in order to judge the flight of the golf ball using the ball flight laws. In, in this case, we need a, a bit of dexterity. So you, you can have the best footwork in the world, but if you have none of these, 
teaching uh, center of pressure and pressure movement isn't going to help your golfer. So if you're touching uh, base with a, um, with a beginner golfer or a high handicap golfer that cannot release the golf club to get into, you know, different forces that will make them hit the ball farther using their, their lower body, it, it might be a little bit premature. What I'm finding is the, uh, the more I understand about the center of pressure and ground forces, you still have to release the club properly using your hands in order to maximize this. So that, that's just kind of a background before we getting deep into it and you start thinking, well, I've got a brand new golfer and I'm going to start to show them how to move their pressure around and they're going to hit it. Uh, you know, no, it's, it's more than that. But the simple concept is the faster the center of pressure moves towards the target ahead of the center of mass generally equals more club head speed. So that's a little different mindset than what we would normally teach golfers. We would normally, we would think that we want them to be smooth and we want them to uh, have great tempo. But sometimes if the, if the center of pressure is at the, uh, the same rate as the center of mass is flowing, we're not going to get much club head speed. So one of the things that I, you know, I, I've kind of learned is the top of the backswing, if we pause and there's no movement at all and everything comes down as one, that's going to be a lot less effective than we get to the top of the backswing and the, the center of pressure is all we're already on the move. And it may be on the move well before that. Just like I was throwing a ball, if my pressure is coming before my hand starts, I'm going to get the maximum leverage and look like I play for the Blue Jays kind of thing. How are we doing so far? Right. Good. Good. Yep. So again, something that you're not going to really sort of right. get into on the first lesson with a new beginner. Right. And try to stress that for sure. Yeah. So, so the concept of understanding pressure is that every action has a equal and opposite reaction. That, and that's, you know, by pushing down with your feet, you're creating energy and moving center of pressure. That, that's what this all comes down to is when to push, where to push, and use your feet to uh, use the ground forces uh, to create to create more uh, potential for speed. And and before we move on, the key is not to swing faster. It's to swing sooner. It's to move the pressure sooner. It's to have different footwork. So all these things uh, will end up creating more club head speed. So back to the basics at this point. Foundation is, uh, is really crucial in golf swings, uh, and you all know that. Getting the, the proper setup and the proper stance is a must if you're going to focus on, you know, trying to achieve a change in pressure and increase club head speed. All mus motions of the body are a response to the forces coming from the ground. So if, if you're not, and, and you can think about this, I remember Bill Bath talking about this way back in early 2000s, that if you were to take a step, you're always going to push with, with a part of your foot before lifting the, the other foot to walk. You know, it's very simple. You have to push in order to start walking, right? And it's probably, if you're going to, if your first step is going to be with your left foot, the first action would be in your right foot in order to walk. And most people, you wouldn't think about that, but, but that's, that's true. The ground sends the force back up through your body. So you must be able to manipulate that force coming up from the ground to be successful. In the basics, there's so much importance in creating good posture in order to create the proper, proper flow of forces. So this, this is not new and, and you guys know what to look for in proper posture and review the manual because that's, uh, that's one of the things that we see over and over again. The more lessons you do, 
the more you see that the posture doesn't look like the people that are playing on TV, men or ladies or seniors. So, anything to add there, Jeff, on the, the, the foundation? No, I think, again, you know, simple movement, as you said earlier, was just taking a step, right? And in, in this natural stride to get from one foot to the other, there, there's a push off phase. Right, and then there's a there's a landing phase called the heel strike. So that that's you know basically what we do when we propel ourselves across the planet. Just in golf, because our feet are side by side, it happens in different parts of our foot, right? And changes the pressure changes from one part of our foot travels to a, to a different part of the foot, and so on. So it's not like it doesn't happen naturally. And again, if you're throwing a ball underhand, overhand to propel something, push something, the ground is is right there each and every time. Uh, talking about footwork, how the feet work to turn the body. And this this is is something that really I probably would say I didn't really understand until you know doing more and more research. But as we apply pressure to the back foot it allows the hips to clear um, which we know is very important uh, and then when we apply the opposite pressure on the front foot it turns the hips back so by using the pressure of downward motion to the ground we can create the turn without manipulating it and it used to be called a weight shift but it's a little bit a little bit misleading. We, we use our feet and we get that, that turn and the body is forced by the pressure change. Uh, so you move the force into the trail foot and, and then into the front foot. Not by turning or using the body so much. It, that's more of a reaction. The hips. I, I had a lesson today and fairly good lady player. And uh, first thing she said to me, was she's really struggling to get her hips turned. And it's funny what her imagination of, of what she was doing wrong, and I put her on video and I looked at it, it wasn't the rota rotation of her hips that was an issue at all. It was the sliding in her backswing and getting her center of gravity um, out beyond the back foot. So she was, she was moving laterally instead of putting the weight down and, and having the, the hips turn a little bit. And so it wasn't long and she started hitting Phil Mickelson bombs. So it was, it was dynamite because it becomes a reaction. We start getting golfers and, and I've been through this myself. Uh, for those that don't know, I've hooked the ball my whole life. I, I've hooked the ball. And I just keep thinking, well, if I can get my hips turned fast enough, then I won't hook the golf ball any longer. But now what I've learned is uh, I can hit the ball straight and it's been uh, mind boggling of how kind of simple it is and, and how, you know, how the ball stays in the air when it's not hooking. That's the other thing. Everybody, and I should, everybody's always a bad term that I use, but when the ball's hooking, and I'm a lefty, so when the ball's hooking, you think the ball's going to go the farthest, but the, the golf ball goes the farthest when it's going straight, and it doesn't lose distance when it's when it's still staying straight. So it's it's been an amazing um, month and a half since I well a month since I've got the pressure mat. So this is uh, I don't know how many people have seen this little video, and I hope it plays. Um, but you, this young lady's on ice. Have you guys seen this video from YouTube? No. no. Okay. Yeah. You've seen it, Jeff? Yes. Yeah. So traditionally with ground forces, first off, there's something called friction that we don't have on ice, which keeps your feet from going out from underneath you. But when you're on ice, it becomes very evident when she turns back or shifts the center of pressure to the back foot. This back foot is going to go behind her. That's where the, uh, the center of pressure is, is in the ground forces is, is going to go this direction. And when she comes forward, 
and friction stops it on the grass. So we don't have to worry about falling flat on our face. But when the pressure turns to the front foot, the, the force is going this direction. And that's what the opposite forces is going to create the turning of the waist. Well, I want you to watch her white shoes and she's perfect for us to use white shoes so you can see which direction they're going. But as she pushes, pushes off, see where the, can everybody see that okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so it shows you the, the trail foot or the back foot, it was going behind her, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And there's no friction to hold her there. So she probably was a relatively good golfer. And as you can see, the setup actually, even though it's a poor camera angle, you know, the ankle joints and the hip joints look kind of lined up and the, uh, the back arm looks like it's hanging straight down. Eh? So I would say that she was a, she was a decent golfer and she was pushing the right direction with, with her feet. That's a, a real easy way to, to really understand what direction your feet are pushing, despite what you you feel in your own golf swing and you're trying to communicate it to somebody else is how it would work if you're on ice. We're going to go through three types of forces. Lateral force, Ben Hogan, uh, anybody that read his book, he talked about the bump, eh? There's a bump, mm -hmm. uh, which, which is basically moving the pressure uh, forward, shifting pressure forward towards the target. And a golfer, like this is Brooks Kepka, Brooks is really good at using the, the lateral force. So that's, that's uh, and he, he'll use a second force very well um, that we'll talk about in a second. And you can kind of see the lateral force by watching the belt buckle. See how the belt buckle is moving forward towards the target throughout the, uh, the basically the second portion of the swing here. This isn't this doesn't really show the um, the back swing and and the complete transition from back or forward to backwards, you know, or backwards to forward, I guess. But th this is your lateral type pressure shift, um, and then we have a second golfer here. This is Dustin Johnson. And you can see, especially the second photo on the right, he doesn't move as much laterally and he's using rotational force uh, by turning and pushing one foot back extremely well and the other one extremely forward to create a lot of, uh, of rotation. And uh, he creates a lot of rotation and, and you can see at impact, his hips are almost open where if we go back to Brooks his are his are still open too but not in the same position as Dustin's so then the the, the third type of force is the vertical force um, and which it which basically we're using the ground to push up like if as if you're jumping or doing a squat pushing down with the balls of your feet and so the, yeah Sorry, go ahead. No, no, you're on the, yeah, right there. So Bubba or Justin Thomas are, are vertical guys. DeChambeau maybe? DeChambeau too, Jeff? Um, yeah, I would say so. Yeah. I think, so, he's, I think he's got a, a couple in there. <laughs> yeah, and, and so that's, that's <laughs> the, the, um, the neat thing is if you go back, we're going to go back here. I would say that Kepka has lateral and vertical. Look where, see the first picture you see here? Look at the second. So yeah. he went from the front leg being, uh, looking like he's gonna ride a horse to the second one, he's standing straight up and down. And so, his, belt, his belt buckle is higher and back. So he's using the vertical forces to lean back, right? To push off. Right. So some of the really, really uh, gurus uh, who, who know way more about uh, ground forces than I would ever profess um, talk about these three forces being like three parts of a, of a rocket ship. 
and the lateral force uh, is the first force. The second one is the rotation, and the third force is the vertical force. And I've heard, I've heard that there are a few golfers out there that have all three. The majority of the golfers you'll see will have maybe one or two. And you know, the guys on tour, like uh, like you'll see here, yeah, Kepka's got a little bit of rotational force, but really he he refers or uses the lateral force and the, uh, and the vertical force versus, uh, uh, and, and the same thing here with Bubba, uh, Bubba doesn't have a lot of lateral force. You can see his hips aren't moving very much towards the target, but he does have a significant rotation here. Um, so he would be kind of the rotary force followed by the extreme vertical force. Right. Um, so, so that, why is that important? Well, it's kind of important depending on what type of student you're going to be working with. And again, this is, again, you're not going to be saying to your beginner, we're going to try and get you bumping and, and turning and jumping. <laughs> like that might be just a little bit too much information for, uh, for me uh, or, or any of you. What I've found for myself is adding, adding the lateral force has really, uh, really benefited me. And then it, and it also brings out the better rotation. So it's kind of a second step. So in the vertical force, uh, yeah, Justin Thomas, uh, he might have all three a little bit. Justin Rose, the, the example I heard was he was kind of the, the three force thoroughbred uh, that he could do all three of these in his typical golf swings. That's the, uh, the, the nuts and bolts of ground force is that they're, you know, they're different forces. It starts from the ground up. It, it creates reactions and the action starts in your feet. And then from there, what I'm going to talk about to kind of uh, wrap things up before I show you a, a little bit of information is first thing is to measure, measure ground forces. We use a pressure mat or pressure insoles are another option. So I don't know if you guys have, the, the pressure mat is basically, I think it was designed by a Canadian. Was it uh, Terry Hashimoto? Was it, was he, is he not? Yes. Canadian? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and so this isn't my big announcement, but it, it is an announcement is that I have, uh, I have reached out to him and he is quite willing to work with the CGTF going forward to see if anybody wants to do a, a purchase of a pressure mat. So uh, that's kind of exciting. Um, it is a big investment, but it's, um, it's also another opportunity to change your position in your local market too. So uh, a technology to offer. Salted in, uh, golf insoles, uh, they, they actually measure everything the pressure mat does. Now, the difficulty in that is if you purchase a pair of, of insoles and I use them that are size 13, how do you throw them into size seven shoe? <laughs> so I, you know, that that's, probably a, not really uh, an opportunity for a golf pro to use in, in the lessons. It'd be more if you're interested in your own golf swing. Um, basically, it's 10% the cost of a, a pressure mat uh, on the retail numbers is to go out and go to Amazon and buy this uh, Korean product. I think it's from Korea. Um, it was first introduced to the, the worldwide market through My Golf Spy. So they got phenomenal reviews. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's something that's kind of really cool to measure your ground force and, and to see, uh, see the center of pressure. So that, that's what the other thing that happens. And I'll show you that when we get into the more of the, the demonstration here. So then the... The next thing is the square shoes. Uh, they're they're uh, advertised quite a bit on you know the weekends during golf, and they're um, uh, I think Nick Faldo is, is Nick Faldo not one of their top spokespeople? He endorses them, yes. Yeah, yeah. And so the idea is um, by spreading out your 
your feet uh, in a kind of a bigger front part of your shoe uh, and creating the right um, bottom, you can, you can have your foot a little more balanced properly where, where the pressure should be pushed down to the ground. Um, so that's just a product. Uh, and then, so I announced in the email that we, uh, we were getting a new member benefit and uh, it's, uh, it's opportunity to get some training aids how to reduce Canadian price uh, with better shipping uh, options. So there's a company in Whistler, uh, Canada, BC, and they, uh, they're, they're Golf Pal, and they've got some phenomenal stuff. Um, so the, uh, for ground forces, there are two products that they carry. Um, this uh, Golf Pedal is, uh, is unbelievable. I, um, I'll tell you a story. When, when you see these two videos, that I'm going to show you. The first golf swing is the same as I hit all winter. I was hitting a six iron. I carry it one, 180 on my sky track and it would roll out to 186. Then I put the golf pedal in and I was on the pressure mat and I started using the golf pedal. And all it is is a little, um, a little device that you step down on. Um, and it, it's, uh, it's really, really cool. And all of a sudden I just started activating, stepping down, stepping down. And I was consistently carrying the ball, um, 195 and it was going 206 with the same oh. six iron and the same ball. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, it also was going straight which I, like I spent all winter hitting a hook, hook, hook. And because going back to those forces, what I was doing was, was incorporating a lateral force that I've never had. I've just had the kind of the rotary motion and being um, a, a swing and trying to swing easy all the time because I know if I get fast at all, I'm gonna hook it. I'm gonna hook it 30 yards. I'm gonna hook it right off the map. And so it's always been timing, trying to hit it slow. And then all of a sudden this little product comes along and I'm stepping on the front foot. I have good rotation with my hands, which is probably above average. And I'm not trying to come across that I'm now Jack Nicholas or anything either. Uh, you know, it, it, but I am hitting the ball straighter and I'm hitting it higher and I'm hitting it longer. I can't say enough about this 50 something dollar uh, training aid. It's, this thing is unbelievable. The second training aid for ground forces that's offered by uh, the Golf Pal golfpal.com is the down underboard and I use that in a couple lessons today as well I find that it does help people who sway uh, a lot because you're putting pressure inwards on your foot as opposed to allowing your back foot or your trail foot to uh, to get the weight to the outside of the foot and even have a video of the golfer seeing their foot kind of roll out so that that's where the down underboard is is pretty cool and you can see uh, it adjusts for width and if you want to open your stance so um a pretty cool device so this is this products on that website that i've I've kind of focused on for this, that the, the owner of Golf Pal and I have created these new pricing. The force pedal is, uh, is my favorite. Uh, the slingshot is, is kind of like a, a super speed stick. It's uh, very comparable, only I would say it's a slightly better feedback and it's uh, uh, definitely a, a more solid product uh, being a little bit heavier to use and a little bit more, uh, there's more feedback in it when you get swinging. So um, all that stuff well, I'm gonna send in our next email. Uh, there is a discount code, you can see it's just uh, CGTF15. We're gonna go through a summary and then I'm gonna switch to another computer that I've already got logged in here. And the ground force summary, uh, the faster the center of pressure movement ahead of the center of mass equals more club head speed. So that's one thing that is, is kind of the intermediate level. It used to be that we want the timing of everything to be in one piece. 
now we're saying that we want this to move before before the center of mass is caught up uh, in order to get uh, more club head speed. The other thing is we're not encouraging somebody to swing faster. That's that's the the center uh, of pressure to move faster or earlier. We're not necessarily um, are trying to get them to swing faster. No, the uh, result the result will be a faster swing. But it, but not through the effort, eh? Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So then proper footwork and setup is crucial. So advanced as some of this stuff is, you still have to be able to get somebody in, in a better setup and using their footwork and, and getting them to move opposite uh, helps the hip rotation, just like we've seen the young lady on the ice with the good golf swing and the good setup. Not all the students are gonna use all three forces. So that, that's one of the things that I think is important and not all students will have the dexterity to capitalize on what we call a good pressure trace. And we're gonna get into the pressure trace here in a minute. So just because you can move your feet really well and you can move pressure really well, if you have uh, a lot of tension in your hands, forearms, shoulders, all that sort of thing, that doesn't necessarily mean everything's gonna be perfect. Top of the backswing, that, that's another thing, you know, for everybody that demonstrates where they should stop the golf swing, the problem with that concept is we can't move our, our pressure forward if we're focused on something up here that's a specific destination as opposed to an area or kind of a time and space. So that, that's one of the things to just consider when you're teaching is that you, you don't want to get too focused on get to this position and stop. Um, right. So if I can just interject that a position is something that is void of motion or movement. Right. So yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So P2, P3, P4, those are all positions that we sort of looked like to analyze. But, you know, it's again, it's uh, it's just kind of a, I don't know. Reference. Pardon? Reference. Reference. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, good. This, is, this to me, is also really, really good game changing is allowing you know people to to be athletic and to hit the ball instead of just what so many of us have been taught over and over again even good golfers and and longtime golfers to swing to swing to swing because the swing is is all about timing and tempo and doesn't really allow for uh, a good pressure change so again, that's not what you're going to teach the person that shows up. And Jeff and I joke about the golfer that shows up and they don't know whether they're right-handed or left-handed. We're not going to teach them to hit the ball. We're going to teach those golfers to swing the club. It's the golfer who comes to you, who's been playing golf a, a number of years and, and can't quite figure out why they aren't generating any um, any distance and that's a pretty common issue is uh, you know I I hit the ball well enough and I make good solid contact but I, I just don't generate any distance so what can we do well we can do uh, we can look at these three type forces and say which one of these can we can we add to your golf swing and your golf game that doesn't mess you up and uh, will help you gain some yardage Mark, if I can ask, um, if you're teaching somebody this, uh, a somewhat accomplished player, you're getting them to focus more on, on, on the weight pressure to the back foot and to the front foot and let everything else be reactionary to that as such? Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? And the reality is um, the, the more things can be reactionary, the better the, the, they're going to be anyways, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So you agree, Jeff? So I just wrote reactionary down on my little notepad here yeah. because I said I used that in a lesson today, right? I'm, I'm teaching some um, some guys who came to Canada. They're from the Dominican Republic and they're young guys, bankers who played baseball in the Dominican. That's all they did. They didn't play golf. 
So we talked about the difference of them baseball being very reactionary, right? And I said, well, let's play that way. Like, let's, let's get you into yeah. that ready athletic posture. And when you feel like you've wound up enough, then use your athleticism and change directions and let it go, right? Don't be so worried about all these getting to these reference positions and making you look like I robot <laughs> back, right? So mechanical, so, so thought, so thinking, right? Let them be more, more natural, right? Get them to feel their feet. If they can, these guys play decent baseball, they know how to change their weight, right? When they're swinging the bat or throwing a ball. So I, I like reactionary, Andrew. Yeah, I, I, I really like this. Um, it goes along with what I was hoping to, to, te to, to teach and, and think, how, how, how to get people to think about it in where instead of focusing on so many positions when you're making a swing in two and a half seconds, is, is let it happen. One second. <laughs> okay, one second. One second. A complete swing, one second. I mean, how you can't think of more than one thing in that time. Heck no. <laughs> so I'm kind of encouraged. I really, really like the sound of this. I'll be interested to uh, work on it and um, get that pedal, I think, and get, get that pedal and try it out. I've, I've deemed that as style based teaching. So it's all about getting those positions, and, and you just confuse the golfer. Uh, totally. If you can get them just to move and, and go fluid through things, think yeah. about the target, get yeah. things down the line, help them to get that lower body to move. You get rid of those positions, as you mentioned. Yeah, it's nice when you don't have to think of anything. You're just your body's just reacting to to what you're doing with the pressure in your feet, really, and that's that's kind of cool. Yeah. The guy who developed the force pedal is Mike Adams. Okay. He is a incredibly knowledgeable. He he's has one of those photographic memories and he has researched the golf swing for forever. And he's one of the top teachers in the US. He's got some great books out. Um and he, he does a lot on ground forces. I'm reading one of his uh, books and right now, and uh, he's got some different thoughts on, again, how people move. And, you know, we really should be sort of screening to see how people move. So are they a lateral shifter? Or are they a vertical? Or are they more rotational? And then we have to teach those people differently as to how their body responds to to this motion that, that we know as a golf. So it's a lot, lot of stuff out there, gentlemen, as, as we all know. I'm going to go through this, um, and, and we're going to use the reference points P1 to the 8. Uh, yeah. first, first thing I want you to realize is these swings, if you just had them on camera, and the camera's not the greatest, but the uh, the information will be good. It'll be mind-boggling. With even that a uh, lower speed camera, when you look at each position in this golf swing, you would almost think it's the same golf swing. Agreed? Yeah. 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 The, each one of these positions are are um, like the same, but we're going to bring in the pressure data, okay? And this is where it kind of gets really cool. So at the bottom of each uh, box that I just put in, you can see the uh, the the weight on each different uh, foot by percentage. So the good swing. Um, on the right versus the good swing on the left or the bad swing or the, they're not a bad swing but the, the the much different distance so so anyways when we're, we're looking at things here we see it's 50 50 so I've changed where the pressure is at setup or at address also you can see 
I don't know if you can see well enough, but on where my cursor is right now, it says 8119 and 4753 uh, and 6832 and 1486. So all of these numbers are extremely different. Okay. And that's measuring uh, from heel to toe, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So that, that is a big difference. <laughs> Um, so then we're going to go to position, the, the first position. We could have went a little further than this, but you can see we're 8614 here and we're 5347. But the big number, and I've got, I got to move that just so I can see it uh, 61 to 57. So we're still in relatively the same position at this point. Uh, and then we get up here, and this is where we start to see major differences. I've got a lot of weight on the back foot, 94 to 6, and I've got 84 to 16. And from what I understand, 75 is probably a, a better number, is yeah. the center of pressure not so far uh, to the back. So then we'll go up to the top. Um, so I'm at 85.15 versus 90.10. So not loading up so much on the back foot, uh, but you can see the uh, the um, heel to toe is is significantly different on the on the swings now, and then we start to come down, and this is where the magic starts happening. Uh, this position here, you can see forty three is still relatively loaded up on the back. It hasn't transferred as much pressure. You can see the white dot. Uh, on the trace, which is the gray line of where the pressure is, it's much closer to the green crosshairs here coming into the golf ball. And I've got 69% of my pressure up towards the front side. And then at impact, or uh, we get a little closer. Yeah, now we're at impact. You can see 42.58 is barely moved to 19 to 81. And that, that's the magic number there. <laughs> Well, winner, it, winner. Yeah. You go from 42% of your weight on the back foot to 19%. Yeah. And that, that equates to 15 yards. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it, it's unbelievable to me. And, yeah. and uh, you have to imagine me sitting here. I, I've been in this room hitting six irons all winter. And I know that I carry it 180 yards. And then all of a sudden it goes 195 stepping on the fourth pedal. And I'm like, what the heck just happened? And, and, and it's not that I was in here swinging hard like I was, uh, you know, trying to crush it. But this was, this is an achievement. And, and it is going back to eliminating this box and this box. How would you ever see the difference as a golf instructor? Yeah. Like there's literally, you can't see that. Uh, no. So then we go to the next step. And 31 versus 16, you know, and then the final number in both cases is going to be uh, is going to be roughly the same. Like I finish in the same position because of <coughs> flexibility issues and everything else. But uh, um, what's kind of neat is, uh, you know, all the uh, all the momentum come, come forward. So that's. Uh, that's the, 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 the thing about pressure. The sooner we can get the pressure towards the front side, um, the, uh, the, the greater the club head speed. And I know Nitro asked uh, a question in the chat about club head speed. And I was foolish enough that I didn't actually um, take a photo of the, uh, of the data on, on the, the Skytrack shot, like, cause th that would have been the right. second bit of information. So you could actually see where the golf ball uh, went and how much spin and, and the trajectory launch angle, angle of descent, all those other great numbers that I would have it, is it, if I was doing a lesson, um, we would, we would do exactly that. We would track all that uh, external data from, from the ball. Um, but to me, this is, uh, and, and and I, I want you to understand, I didn't do this premeditated for this. This was just me fooling around with the pressure mat and the, uh, uh force pedal. yeah, the force pedal. So yeah. it's, it's pretty, uh, evident, right? Like that it, 
that it kind of works. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I would just want to make a comment is that so, you know, everybody's looking for the F word is faster, right? And I, I don't think we want to fall into that um, feeling that we're shifting pressure faster or swinging the club head faster. The key is to move the pressure sooner. Yeah. Okay. So I, I watch guys in athletic uh, motion golf. And it, so again, talk about P2. Um, the pros start moving their pressure forward at position two in their takeaway. That's how soon the tour players, whether they go laterally or vertically or rotationally, by the time their hands are halfway back, they're already changing direction. So it's not that they're going fast, they're just going sooner. And Mark used a good word, it's the dexterity. Can people do this? Can they have their upper body going in one direction and their lower body going in the opposite? Sorry? I say you see that a lot with the Korean girls also. Yes. Right, their, their hips sometimes are already facing the target before they're even at P6. Yeah, so one of my new training aids is actually a swivel bar stool. It's a single pedestal bar stool with a little bucket seat on it, and I have it high up. So I'm on, I'm on a swivel office chair right now, right? So if I want to turn into my backswing, I feel, right? I feel I push from my feet, right? Not how I turn. I can, with my bare feet on the carpet here, and I'm going to use the bar stool out on the driving range just to really now as I start to go back the other way so people can get a relationship to if their buttocks are sort of on that bar stool, how do they feel like they go around, right? Do they go a little lateral or do they rotate? And when do they come through? Do they elevate or do they have the ability to shift their belt buckle up and back? or do they turn their belt buckle around to the target? So I'm, I'm liking the bar stool out on, on the driving range. That way I can, that way I can sit my empty body down. <laughs> then you can justify the drink in your hand because you're at the bar. <laughs> yeah. So other, other words that I, that I use is, you know, with, we get lots of hockey players here is the skating action. Mm -hmm. right? When you skate, when you push off, you skate, you glide from one side to the next or snowboarders use their feet to control the snowboard skiers use their feet to change the direction. All these other little things, right? Get him to think using the bottom part of the ground or their lower extremity to initiate how their body moves and reacts. I think a lot of old, older players like Sam Sneed used his knees. You guys heard of that? They used to feel like he used, kicked his knees away into the back swing and then he used his knees to drive forward in the forward swing. Yeah, I've, I've always used a, a wedge to help players that have the tendency to sway, right. to help them keep that weight on the inside. And then I just say, come and kiss your knees, right? Yeah. So you straighten the left knee if you're right-handed. You straighten the left knee and you make it the right knee touch it. And that starts them to get that feeling, that, you know, especially a new golfer, get that feeling of that rotation happening. Yeah. Jeff's good uh, training aid, the door stop too, under the back foot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The door wedge. That's how yeah. the was referring to. Yeah. 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 But then again, right, remember sometimes people can have that. If they're a lateral shifter, they're going to shift over onto that to stabilize on their trail foot so they can laterally shift back towards the target. Yeah, as long as they're not, they're not losing the weight to the back side of the foot, right? Right. As Mark said, if they're if their back foot isn't peeling off, right? Their big toe isn't peeling off the planet yeah. 
and they're rolling over on their ankle. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's not conducive to storing any sort of forces. All right. All right. Well, that's uh, it's been an hour. So I guess the presentation was uh, hopefully the right length, and hopefully you guys found it informative. If you have any follow up questions, we you always give us a call, shoot us an email. What what I'd encourage you to do is there's so much information out there to kind of make it your own, go out and find a lot of this stuff. It was, uh, it's, it's really fascinating how everything's evolving with technology. A lot of us focus on beginner golf. I, I personally teach uh, a lot of people that are uh, beginners, but I'm also getting people that, you know, setting goals to want to break 80 and it's, that's a lot of fun too, right? Yeah. To, get their short games in, in uh, peak, peak conditions so that they, they stand a chance to break 80 and, and then work on some repet, uh, repetitive moves that they can work on. So, yeah, it's... Uh, Did you see that note from Nitro there? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope, I hope you get some information out of this and I hope you had a good time. And I want to thank Jeff for, uh, he did quite a bit of the legwork on uh, the presentation and mm -hmm. he supports everything good. So, so got to uh, have good feet, got to have good balance, right? So width of stance, where do you feel from heel to toe, right to left? All those, all those things in the foundation, as Mark said earlier in the presentation, are the only way that we're going to create energy with using the pressure into the ground. Yeah. One of the neat things I saw on, I think I actually saw it on LinkedIn was uh, Colin Montgomery getting ready for the senior tour, hitting uh, drivers out of the sand, you know, so you can, wow. you know, getting, getting uh, his, his uh, pressure uh, and balance in check, right? Like he really wanted to be stable and get that yeah. proper foundation that I was talking about, get the foundation underneath you. So back in my days of athletic training and I traveled with uh, our Canadian Olympic soccer team, we would go and train in uh, Central America and we would train in the water on the beaches and have the boys in their bare feet run in the sand and then run in you know, various depths of water and then back in the sand just to really a strengthen their ankles for injuries, but train their balance in that, man. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's a lot of fun, fun training. Mm -hmm. just, just a little uh, mention um, that might be good that we keep up our, our uh, information on the website. I actually got an email from a guy who was searching our website and he found me on the website looking for lessons. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So what you're referring to by the website, the CGTF Pro Directory uh, yes. website. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fantastic. That's what it's for. And, and Dale, it's a good shout out because I know there's lots of people that never, ever log in when they get their credentials and they, they never update it. So uh, if you have a place to teach and you're in the teaching business, um, yeah, you should, you should kind of put in what, what separates you from the next person in your vicinity. So, uh, you know, I, I can't believe it, but I live in a little tiny community um, and I'm getting people that have found me through Google. And I think, how can you Google Mark Ray and end up getting a golf lesson in, in a community of 1800 people? Like, like it's amazing to me. Right. You know, yeah. um, but, but it happens. So yeah, the CGTF pro website, make sure. And if, again, if you need help logging in, or if you need help updating, I know putting a picture on is almost uh, rocket science. So what I say is just send an email with a picture to golf at cgtf.com. And uh, I will personally put it on your profile in two seconds uh, where it might take you two days. So uh, anything else you want put up there? I, I did one the other day for uh, Wells. I, I, she sent everything in. I updated her profile and put it all in. And, and love doing that because I love to think that you're promoting yourself and then and separating yourself from uh, the people that um, that aren't doing that. So it's awesome. Cool, cool. All right, uh, just one last thing. Go Habs, go. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, well, the Canucks are done, so nothing yeah. to cheer for there. <laughs> I think Montreal might be next, so <laughs> yeah. Anyways, all right, All right I hope you have a good, safe, long weekend. And uh, tomorrow, uh, get out there if if you can and do something positive. If not, uh, just want to say thanks for supporting the CGTF and being part of it. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Thank guys. You. For all the work. Appreciate it, Jeff, Mark. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, guys. See you tomorrow, Andrew. See you tomorrow, Jeff. Yeah. All right. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>